Get ready, Avalanche territory. Denver Sports presents the Mile High Hockey Podcast with Mike Evans. Denver Sports is your home for the most Avalanche content. Now here's your host, Mike Evans. Hey everybody, welcome into a bonus playoff edition of the Mile High Hockey Podcast. I'm Mike Evans as we come to you here right after the Avalanche won game two. Whew, feel fortunate saying that they won game two. What were people out there thinking when they fell behind 2 nothing? I'll admit to being stunned. I thought the Avalanche would come out, hair on fire. Seattle would be content having gotten their win, their split, and be ready to go back home to Seattle. But instead, Avs came out tight. Seattle came out looking to really put the hammer down on the Avs. They smelled blood and... Avs fall behind one nothing, and then 2 nothing, and it's like, whoa, what's happening here? And, you know, it's funny. Even when they were down 2 nothing, I was texting with people and was hearing from people here at the station who were getting ready to bury me for being a jinxie cat, even though I have not yet come across one person here at the station at the fan who picked the Avs in six or seven, so I don't know why I'm the jinxie cat, but anyway, this isn't about me. But... What was uh, my thought process and what I was going back and forth talking with people was the idea that there is something to the idea. There's a reason why a cliche is a cliche. There's an element of truth to it, right? The cliche is that a two-goal lead on the road is the worst lead in hockey. And and there really is something to it. And so even though the Az were down 2-0, I wasn't panicking because there was still a lot of hockey left. But they were at a position where the next goal was going to be crucial that being down two nothing isn't the end of the world being down two goals isn't the end of the world but you better not get down by three then it becomes then it becomes tricky so it was really just a matter of okay can the avalanche keep it at two nothing and can they find a way to get their game going and there, there was. I thought that the post-game commentary coming out of the locker room was interesting about how the team's mindset was coming coming into this game because I think you and I are all watching that game and we see them playing in the first period and like, why are they so flat, right? Where's where's the juice? Where's the energy? Where's the desperation? And the players all to a man said, no, we are ready to go. We're excited. We're fired up, but... They admitted to some pressure, feeling some pressure, a little bit of tension, a little bit of anxiety. And typically in sports, when you're feeling a little bit of that pressure, it does tighten you up and you don't move as freely. You don't play as fluid and it can look like you're not putting a whole lot of effort into it. And so what it was, was you had this avalanche team feeling some of the pressure and that leads to another question. You know, wh- why? Why is this team that is a Stanley Cup champion, why are they still feeling that kind of pressure? And I, I, I think when you stop and think about it, some of it makes sense because you're at home, you're expected to win. You're not only expected to win, you're expected to put on a show. Everybody's still reveling in what happened last year in the playoffs. And yet, as a team, you're not the same team that you were last year you don't have probably the same kind of unbridled confidence or swagger or arrogance because you're not you know you're not the same team and you 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 have to you know inside that room that you have to win a different way and maybe there's some doubt there's some questions about whether or not you can do it so the abs are not immune to feeling some pressure but you could tell it was pressure that they were feeling and some tension that they were feeling and not simply a matter of being flat and not into it because the moment that they finally did score and it was really kind of a you know a, a very obscure type play right it wasn't a sense that something was building that all of a sudden they were ready to break through Nathan McKinnon wins a draw gets it back to the point Kale McCarr puts the puck on net Artori Lekin and tips it on the way through goal mayhem and then It was almost like that pressure relief, that pressure valve was let loose and just, you know, all the, all the steam, you know, burst out, right? Because it was like, they could exhale, right? And immediately 38 seconds, they score again. 
they're flying around. It's two two. So I think that what that tells you is that this was not a team that was flat. It was a team that was feeling some pressure. And the moment that they got that break, that ignition, that igniting moment that got that first goal, then they were free. And then they were loose. And then they went and played. And and it was a really good hockey game for that point on. And they get the win. So not the way I expected it to go. Um, certainly not the way I expected game two to go. I thought the Avalanche would win and win convincingly. But, hey, they're, they're still clearly dealing with some stuff. And Seattle's good, right? Is that probably the big takeaway that we get from these first two games? Seattle's good. And for all of you, and you know who you are, second second show in a row I've done this, but you know who you are, that kept claiming, hey, we got to win the division. We got to put so much energy into winning the division because we want to avoid Minnesota or Dallas. We want to get Seattle in the first round because it's the easier path. Hey, look, I picked the Avalanche to win this series in five, okay? But, but, allow me to take this moment to say I didn't completely buy the idea that Seattle was going to be so much easier than Minnesota and Dallas. Now, I will admit that it was more from the standpoint the Avalanche will beat any one of those teams. I don't know why some of you are making Minnesota or Dallas to be out to be the boogeyman, and Seattle's just this, you know, no, also ran. So I was making the case for I don't think there's really that big of a difference between Seattle, Minnesota, and Dallas, and and clearly uh, I was right in that regard because Seattle, Seattle's good. You know, they're you know, you think about it, they're they're a team that that should be considered kind of dangerous because they're a team that's made up of veteran guys, guys that have been around this league, certainly have resumes. And what makes them a little bit more dangerous is because they are the classic underdog team that nobody is giving a chance to. And these are castoffs, right? These are guys that were told by the teams that they played for. We're prepared to lose you. You know, we're, we're, we're prepared to move on without you. Boy, you start thinking about the ways that you can put a chip on your shoulder as an athlete and as a team. Seattle's loaded with motivational chips. So that that makes them dangerous. And they got some talent. You know, th- this, this notion, I think in game one, Seattle was like, Hey, you know, we'll, we'll play a little bit more defensive oriented and we'll take our chances when they're open but we're not going to push it too much we're going to make sure we have guys back and clogging up the neutral zone certainly have three four guys back in our own defensive zone but last night man they came out and they were just flat out out skating out uh, talenting out uh physically i'm making up words here uh the avalanche in the in the early part of it and so what does that mean now moving forward i i think the avalanche We're going to see the best of the Avalanche over these next two games. Uh, Going into this uh, playoff uh, scenario, this playoff season, the the point I kept making was I I really am not stressed out about home ice or not. I'm not stressed out about really pushing it hard down the end of the regular season to get home ice because I think this is a better road team. I really do. I think that the Avs are a team right now because of what they did last year, what the expectations are for this year. There is a lot of pressure when they're playing at home. And I think now that they're going out on the road, I think they're going to relax. Uh, I think they're going to breathe a little bit more. I think they're going to get away from, I think being away from home and all the stuff, all this stuff that that is around them when they're at home, I think that'll be better. And I think they'll just kind of be able to focus in on, on hockey and being around each other. And I think they're going to be a much better hockey team, certainly a more dangerous hockey team. And now... We'll see how Seattle handles all this. Because think about from Seattle's standpoint. They came into Denver, the ultimate underdog, everybody writing them off, everybody predicting a sweep or five-game series. And they come out, and it's just us against the world, and they play two really good hockey games. But now they're going home. And now they're going home where they're expected to put on a show. It's going to be the first-ever home game playoff game for the Kraken the building's going to be alive the city's going to be alive there's going to be a ton of energy there are going to be a ton of distractions for these guys and let's see how they handle it let's see how they handle being at home and all the 
stuff that goes on around them now? Are they going to be able to maintain that same kind of mindset and focus that they had playing these first two games of this series on the road? I'll be curious to see it because the Avalanche now can go into Seattle, sort of simplify things, just play their game, and not worry about how it looks. Seattle, do they start to to feel like they got to put on a show? Do they start to push the play a little bit more? Do they take some more chances? Do their defensemen pinch in a little bit more? These are the kind of things that I think sometimes plague home teams in these Stanley Cup playoffs, and it's why the road teams play so well and have such a, a great road record throughout these playoffs. A couple of quick thoughts on the, on the game and some of the individuals. I thought game two was really important for the Avs because – the, the big theme for this team throughout this playoff run is you know what you're going to get from Rantanen, McKinnon, McCarr. What about the other guys? What kind of contributions do you get from the other guys? Is there enough depth, secondary scoring from your forward lines to be able to support McKinnon, Rantanen, McCarr? Yesterday was encouraging. Arturi Lekkinen scores. Val Nechuskin scores. So that that's awesome right there. But you saw Evan Rodriguez had a really good game. You know, he's out there. He's hitting people. He had five hits, drew a penalty or got a penalty, played with that grit, right? Played with a little sandpaper, had a little bit of cadre to his game, a cadre type impact. Not saying he's Nazem cadre, but I'm saying for this game, he really made a positive impact. And I think he kind of earned his playoff stripes as an avalanche. Evan Rodriguez. Uh, I, JT Comfer, I thought, had a strong game. Uh, Devon Taves, who was awful in that first period, you know, he steps up. He got better as the game went along. Scores the eventual game-winning goal. So it's, it's going to be so important for this Avalanche team to get contributions from other guys and not be overly reliant on their superstars. So last night was a start. They still need more of it, but at least it was a start uh, from the standpoint that other guys were making contributions. So that's that's awesome. Keep it up. Uh, Sammy Gerrard's out there hitting people. Uh, Bo Byram. So it's it was an encouraging performance. And I, I do think that the best the Avs have to give in this series is coming up. And I think you'll see that in these next two games in Seattle. We'll be here to talk about them. And let's see, we'll we'll do another one of these after the game on Monday, game number four. Uh, we'll be back here on Tuesday, right here for the Mile High Hockey Podcast to uh, continue to talk about the Avs and this uh, playoff run. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your pucks. Enjoy the hockey scene in Seattle. And we'll see you next week.